Hey everybody! What we're doing in this video is I'm going to show you very quickly some of the updates to the newest R Studio. So if you've been watching a lot of my videos, I was using one of the older versions of R Studio and just recently upgraded to the newest version, which is 1.0136. So um, in this version, this uh, a lot of stuff has changed, and two very big things that I think are important to keep in mind when you're watching what I'm doing in an older video because it won't match. Um, so the biggest one to me is the import data set option. This used to say local file or um, and from the internet, but now when I click import data set, I have a lot more options. And this is pretty fantastic, especially the SPSS options because um, a lot of people were still using Foreign, which hasn't been updated in a while and has some issues, and then Mimisk, which has its own set of little quirky things that you have to deal with. Um, and this version uh, includes the ability to import SPSS files a bit more natively, or at least a bit more less obtusely. Um, so let me just show you how to do the SPSS thing first. Um, my class will mostly, if you're taking my course, you're mostly gonna use CSV files because they're a lot easier to work with. But if you're someone who watches my channel, I'd love to show you some of the new things with SPSS. Okay. So I'm going to click from SPSS. The first time that you do this, it will take a moment because it's going to install the Haven library and probably a couple of other dependencies that that library has. But this window is a lot better. And it, to me, this is just really great. So I'll click browse so you can find kind of a messy data set hidden away on my computer here under research. Um, so I work with my friend, Dr. Stefan Schulenberg, doing a bunch of really cool research on uh, positive psych, but their lab is still using SPSS, and so they have these very, very messy data sets, so we'll pick this one, that often include um, lots of different variables that maybe sometimes we have labels and maybe sometimes we don't. And so actually, here's one. Um, that they're doing. They have run a disaster lab, so you can look up his work. It's really cool. But they have labels here in the label column if you're used to using SPSS. Um, and then they have um, some questions where that have um, different value labels, and sometimes they only label the two endpoints, meaning it's a one to seven scale, but they've labeled point one and point seven. Importing those in Mimisk has caused me problems because then it erases all the other points because only two of them had labels, which is a real big issue. <laughs> so when I open this sort of data set, it'll show me a preview of what it looks like. It shows me the value label, the label that this had, and it actually saves the value labels as well. So I'm just gonna tell us to import, but not with this crazy name. Let's just call this data set example. I don't wanna open the data viewer. And it also shows me the code it's going to use right here, which is nice if I want to copy that code. Instead, you can just hit copy. But if I'm just being lazy, I can hit import. And to me, here's the greatest thing about what this does. Right. <clears throat> is it allows me to look at a bunch of, it saves a lot more of the information. I don't know the best way to explain this really, but before you imported things in SPSS, it sort of forced them into one of the categories that we had. So numeric, integer, whatever. Uh, and I may just never have learned how to do this properly. I just kind of hacked my way through it. But now it saves a lot more of that information. So it saves the names of the variables, but leaves them sort of value labeled. So let's look here at question one which clearly it says, what is your age? So it saved that label for me, right? And then it um, imported the value labels that were they included for that. So I can make a table here of that um, dollar sign, let's see, it's Q1 here. And that table gives me the, num the numbers here that those are with instead of the labels. Before that would import as a labeled variable and I'd have to tell it like, hey, you know, I really want to be able to calculate something on this. And so that's not so handy with questions that are like male and female because I really want those to show me male and female, but there's a way to get that attribute out of that variable. But it's very, very handy for um, questions that are meant to be um, 
meant to be numeric, but also have value labels like, like Likert scales. And so that will allow me to calculate the average on a variable that before would only import as text. So I think this is pretty awesome. So here's an example is BRS scale. So I can make a table of the BRS scale. Oop. Okay. And I am hitting tab to fill it in quickly. So let's see here. I, and it shows me the numbers. But within that variable, it also is saving the information about whatever values, labels that they had. So if I just look at the variable itself, it actually still has the value labels that they imported, um, included so they could remember what they are. So it saves both pieces, which is just fantastic. Um, so that's my like, quick rant about importing SPSS files. But for the purposes of my class, um, as you're watching me import data sets, read.csv will still work great. But if you like this import data set option, click from CSV, it's going to look different than what I maybe am doing. And it uses a package called Reader um, or library instead of the native R library. And so if I pick a file, let's pick a file from my class here. So I have folders and folders and folders. <laughs> to give me just a second here. Let's import this basics one. So it's going to show me how everything is coming in, right, is importing. Um, it also allows me to pick what line to start on. It allows me to like fix some other different little issues. And I'm going to turn data viewer off because it's a big file. Okay. And so that imported in much the same way that read.csv would import. So it's going to look a little different on your end um, just because we I was using an old version. So I can also import from Excel, which I have found works hit and miss. So it works well if you um, have just sort of all numeric or all character columns. But if you're trying to deal with some funky columns like dates and times, it's a little, I don't know if I'm not formatting it correctly or if it just, the kinks haven't been worked out. But that is one issue I've had is like dealing with uh, time data. So um, doing it as minutes, seconds, hours, that sort of thing has been kind of iffy. Um, but that's the new part up here that'll look very different from my old notes. The other thing that I've noticed that's very different that at first I really hated and now I'm slowly starting to like is stacked code. So if you've watched a lot of my videos, you know I'll go on and on about stacking your code, making it easier to read, to understand what you're doing. So here's an example. Um, load, uh, load everything here that this is about to use. Um, oh, it helps if you set your working directory. Ah, okay. There we go. Um, so let's say I wanted to uh, melt this data set and create a long data set. And I've stacked my code here, which means that I, instead of running it all across one line, have it put into neat little, uh, into a, um, a several lines stacked together. Before, when you were doing this, especially if you've done anything with graphs, you would have to hit Command Enter if you're on a Mac or um, Control Enter if you're on Windows multiple times, once for each line. So you'd be like, pachunk, 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 and this line would run. So you'd do each line separately or highlight the whole thing and click Run. But now there's a native understanding of stacking. So when I hit Command Enter here just a second, it's going to run all three lines at once, which is very, very nice because then I don't have to like keep hitting enter if it's really long code. But if you are not used to that, it is very disconcerting at first because you're like, wait, what just happened? So it will run um, stacked lines all together all at once. Okay. Now when I was talking to my students about this issue. They're like, oh, that sucks. You don't know what line the error occurred on if you have a problem with your code. But let's say I accidentally left off this comma here. What you'll see happen is it'll run all of them and it'll give you an error, unexpected symbol in blah, blah, blah. Um, and so we'll actually still show you the errors. Um, it's just, you, it runs everything at once. So you got to kind of pay attention and parse it out down at the bottom. Okay. So those are the biggest two changes that I've seen in the newest version of Studio. Um, our updates, I haven't seen too many changes from 3.3.1 to 3.3.2. Um, that would cause us um, to get different uh, answers. 
but um, studio itself has changed just a little.